EDUC 640 Balanced Literacy. Welcome to week number six. Football season started this past weekend and the Packers play tonight at eight o'clock. Our family are big Packer fans. Even though it's an indicator that summer is coming to a close with preseason football, we always look forward to our Sundays in the fall and the winter watching our favorite team play. My family has season's tickets, so we are fortunate to attend games, sit in the sixth row, hearing the cracking of helmets and seeing the whites of the players' eyes. This year we are going to the Christmas Eve game against the Minnesota Vikings. My brother-in-law is coming with us, because he and he lives in Minnesota with my sister, and is a big Viking fan. Packer fans are kind, so he won't get any major backlash, but don't be fooled, we're going to razz him a little bit during the whole game. This is our last full week before class ends. Time just flew by. I had miscalculated and we have seven weeks instead of eight and your philosophy paper is due at the end on August 19th, which is in less than two weeks. Week number six brings a flashback to the last week of the course, or to last week of, this, of the course, week number five. Oh boy, I don't like that at all. Welcome to week number six. Football season started this past weekend and the Packers play tonight at eight o'clock. Our family are big Packer fans. Even though it is an indicator that summer is coming to a close with preseason football coming, we always look forward to our Sundays watching our favorite team play. My family has season tickets, so we're fortunate to be able to attend a bunch of games. We sit in the sixth row and can hear the cracking of helmets and see the whites of the players' eyes. We are going to the Christmas Eve game against the Minnesota Vikings this year, and my sister and brother-in-law live in Minnesota. My brother-in-law is going to come with us, and he's a Vikings fan. But Packer fans are usually very kind, so he's not going to get many major backlash, but don't be fooled. We will razz him the entire game. This is our last full week before class ends, and time just seemed to fly by so fast. I had miscalculated a little bit. We have seven weeks instead of eight, and your philosophy paper is due August 19th in less than two weeks. Week number six will bring us a flashback to week number five, a presentation on differenti differentiated instruction, multiple intelligences, and understanding by design with a reflection assignment. We also will be finishing up our text with a jigsaw choice forum and a reminder about the philosophy paper. Week number five flashback. Last week, you read chapter four of the text and supplemental materials about writing and the writer's workshop model. You then participated in a discussion forum using the coding strategy to share your thoughts. In using the coding strategy yourself, you can better understand how to implement it and use it with your students. The next forum was about some information from DPI. My purpose of bringing that to your attention is to make you aware that the DPI has many supporting documents that connect to best practice and balanced literacy. The Common Core State Standards no longer tell us what to teach, they're wanting teachers to teach in particular ways that grow learners into critical thinkers in our world. I'm glad that many of you found this information to be valuable and saw the connections to all that we've been exploring. There are so many connecting factors that validate implementing best practices in our classrooms. Our balanced literacy highlight is short and sweet as it is the independent component. Here, students are demonstrating what they have learned. Choice is also a component of this, and many of you mentioned how motivating choice can be for students. During this independent time, students need to be strategic readers and writers. Therefore, a purpose needs to be set for their reading and writing. Activities need to be available for students to complete before, during, and after their reading and writing. This is one of the easiest balanced literacy components to understand. However, it's not a time for teachers to just sit back at their desks and let the students go. We need to be conferring with them, listening to our students and their needs, finding out where we can best support them in their endeavors. I also wanted to quickly discuss basal series. Many of you mentioned that your curriculum comes from a specific basal. Sometimes these series can be lifesavers, especially for new teachers. They give you a great starting point and foundation. However, be warned. Typically, basal series fall flat in certain areas. And this is where you need to bring in supplemental reading materials and writing materials to fill in those balanced literacy component gaps. Basals can be a good majority of your balanced literacy program but should not be the end all be all. If you use a basil, the big idea is to keep in mind is that you, as the educator, you need to take what you know about best practices and balanced literacy and supplement, tweak areas so you can create a reading program that reaches all of your learners.
DI, MI, and UBD Reflection. I have created a presentation on differentiated instruction, multiple intelligences, and understanding by design. Through reflections and posts, I have observed that many of you have background knowledge about these concepts. In this presentation, I give an overview of differentiated instruction and how I have used differentiation in my classroom. I also present on mul multiple intelligences, looking at how to incorporate and teach to students with different intelligences. Understanding by design is a way to create units, very similar to working backwards. I explain the process and walk you through the steps, modeling how I use the process to create one of my units. UBD is not for everyone, but once I heard about it, it is the main way I've created units for my class. After watching the presentation, you will complete a reflection write-up about the information and the implications to your classroom. This is due Sunday at 10. Our forum for this week will wrap up our text. I'm running this as an informal jigsaw activity. In a jigsaw activity, students are assigned different readings. They need to synthesize the information and then share it with other students, teaching them the important aspects of their reading. In our class, we will be doing this less formally. I'm asking that you skim these last few chapters of our text and choose which chapter you would like to read, best practices in math, science, or social studies. Then dig in. Read your choice chapter more closely, honing in on the main points, best practices in that subject. In your forum post, share why you chose that subject or chapter, the powerful points that it held, and what it means for your classroom. Be sure to title your post so that other learners know which chapter you read. Be sure to reply to two other learners about their thoughts. I'm not requiring you to respond to others who have read a different chapter, but I am encouraging you to do so if there's a variety of choice from all 13 of you. I'm assuming that we should get a good balance of chapters and jigsaw posts. And another reminder that you should be continuing to plan and write up your philosophy of literacy paper, which is due August 19th. In our last week, I'm going to be devoting that whole week to allowing you to just go ahead and write that paper. You will need to return to week number five to turn it in. From the DPI forum, I'm able to see that many of you are connecting ideas together and finding ways to weave in the abundant information from this course in creating a philosophy of literacy. If you need any assistance or have any questions, please contact me and I will assist as best I can. I can't believe how close we are to the end. Happy reading and writing!